We back got off the plane in DFW. We got off the plane, 15 people standing there. I said, would you guys all go home? And the guy looks right at me and says, we figured you out. <laughs> Sound effects in the back row. He said, I've seen you speak three times. I've now watched you for two and a half days. Met your family, saw you, got you figured out. I said, what'd you figure out? He said, we've all agreed. You got a crush on your wife. <laughs> and that is very true. We got married when we were 19. We've been married 26 years. She's my girlfriend. Then he asked the question, folks, that I, the reason I'm telling you the story. He looks right at me and says, is she prettier today than she was when you first met her? And yeah, guys, she's standing right next to me. I said, why don't you just shoot me, dude? I said, don't get me lying. Am I more handsome today than when she first met me? Don't get her lying. But do you know what I do know? Do you know what I do know? If I'd have said that one more time, you'd been the slowest group I've talked to in a long time. Do you know what I do know? Everything I love about Margaret is still there. I just choose to look for it. And some days I have to choose to look real hard. <laughs> but you know what I've learned in life? Say what? <laughs> Not looking for it's worse. <laughs> Folks, it's your chance now to find the love in your relationships. Find the love in your home. Find the love together. And this business is allowing it. Do you understand the why? If you did, the building wouldn't be big enough. That's the truth. And now we're going to talk about how to take ownership of leadership of your own life in the seconds I have left. Are you really ready? Say yes. yes. Next time you're talking to somebody, next time you're talking to somebody, just do this. Stare at their hair. Look at their eye. Stare at their hair. Look at their eye. Stare at their hair. Look at their eye. Then give it the old hair look. What do they do the minute you walk away? Jeez, what's the problem here? You want to see how powerful leadership is? Say yes. yes. Next time you're talking to somebody, just do this. You having a good time? Everything going okay? You okay? Huh? Huh? You okay? Huh? Got a long one there, big guy. What's he do the minute I walk away? Plah! What's the problem here? Folks, you can influence a person this easy. Say true. Yes. If you can influence a person that easy by looking at their hair, destroy their focus. By doing this, almost takes them out of the game. If you can do that that easy, then I'm here to ask you to do something very important. Are you really ready? Say yes. yes. Get up in the morning and choose to influence people to have a better life. Please say yes. yes. That's what it's all about. There are three laws of leadership. Write them down. Law number one. Law number one. When put in charge, take charge. You've been put in charge of your life. You've been put in charge of our economy. You've been put in charge of making a difference. Would you pick up the reins and get her done? I coach soccer. Anybody in this room coach? I have two laws. Law number one, no cussing. Law number two, no bad seeds. And that includes the parents. Are you with me? Say yes. So there we are down in San Antonio, my 13-year-olds. We're up by two in the semifinals, and a dad unloads on this highly seasoned professional referee. She's 16. Are you tracking with me? Say yes. yes. So now I have a choice, like you're going to have a choice. When you're out of the room, are you going to make the right choice? I hate to break the news to you, some of you are not. That's why you have to come back to another meeting. Maybe I didn't get it done for you. I'm sorry. Maybe somebody else didn't. I'm sorry. But don't stop looking. So you know what? I called the official over. Her name was Leela. I said, do me a favor. Tell the coach we're going to forfeit. She goes, why are you doing that? You're up by two. You've already beaten the other team. You're going to, be, you're going to win the tournament. And everybody's talking about how cool your kids are. I said, I didn't come here to win a tournament. I came here to teach my kids. How have we gotten so far off track? Then she broke my heart, made me cry. She goes, you're not doing this because of what your dad called me, are you? I said, yeah. 
she goes, don't worry about it. I'm used to it. Folks, that's what I'm talking about, us standing up and making a difference in America. I said, you know what? I'm not much in this world. I really am not. I don't see TV cameras. I don't see a bunch of people watching the game. It's just me and my kids and my parents and my sidelines. So I'm going to choose. You're not going to get used to it. You know why I showed up for you tonight? Everybody said, well, hey. For you to choose to take ownership of leadership of your own sidelines so that everybody close to your life is going to be so happy you're back. Who understood the kids? They all said the same thing. I didn't say it. 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 Mr. MP. I give all my kids nicknames. He's Mr. Politician. He's my informer. <laughs> Coach Dodds, I knew who said it. I know. He said, we were hoping you didn't hear him, but thank you. He thanked me. Who did not thank me? The parents. They had gas, hotel, food. After, you know what's amazing? After the threats, are you with me? Say yes. After the threats, are you with me? Say yes. yes. One dad came to me and says, what are you thinking, coach? We already took a picture in front of the trophy. Well, I decided if I didn't change something, I'm going to repeat it. Now do you know where I'm going? Say yes. yes. Everybody in this room has something that needs to get changed. Everybody, me included. It's now time for us to get it done. Now. Not tomorrow. Now. I called my parents up. I said, you want, to be on the bus going to, you want your son to be on the bus going to Washington, D.C. with my next tournament? You will be at practice Tuesday night ready to play. They thought they were playing the kids, so they all got new shoes and new shorts and new shirts. So they showed up, and I said, you're on this team, you're on that team, you're on this team, you're on that team, you're on this team and that team. One of the dads goes, what team's the kids on? Thanks for asking. <whistles> hey, kids, come on in. They all came in. I said, here's what we're going to do. While your parents are playing full field, full schedule with an official, you're to get on the field and act like your parents. Should have seen the look on their faces. So there's mom and dad running up and down the field. <laughs> and there's son. Run, dad! Yeah. Mom cracks one right in front of the net. Focus, mom. That could have been the winner. <laughs> then my favorite dad of all. God, he's, I love him dearly. I call him Tiny. He's 365 pounds light. Are you with me? Say yes. His favorite comment is, Suck it up, boys! Suck it up! So there he is, half a field behind the ball at all times. Never caught the ball. The whole team's on the sideline going, Suck it up, big guy! Suck it up, big guy! Suck it up, big guy! You know what? You know what? You know what? Say what? We had zero problems from that day on. Zero. Do you know why? Say why. That was unacceptable. Say why. Say why. It's easy to be critical from the sidelines in life. You want that spark. You want that shine. You want that greatness. You want that love that you've been missing for too long. Say yes. Say yes. Then from this day forward, never, ever in your life, ever again, be critical from the sidelines of any part of your life. Say true. Now I'm going to explain the why. Listen to me very carefully because I only got two minutes left. Gosh darn, the time's going by so fast. That was a good one. Don't, don't waste it, aim it. Are you ready? Say yes. A dad comes to my house, drops off an $8,400 Polaris four-wheeler. I said, dude, nice four-wheeler. He said, yeah, your kids all got four-wheelers. You don't have one. I said, yeah, mine went to college. <laughs> Are you tracking with me? Say yes. yes. He says, well, I went and bought this for you. I said, you demand. <laughs> you are demand. And then all of a sudden, my heart got real uncomfortable. Do you know how you know when you're really back on track? Everybody say, how? Wow. Temptation shows up like you haven't seen it in a long time. That's how you know. I looked at it and I says, Guy, if I look at that four-wheeler one more time, I'm going to hug and kiss it. you got to get it off my property. He said, you haven't heard the story. I said, take it off my property, I'll hear the story. He takes it off the property. He comes back, he says, you remember when you put me on the soccer field? I said, yeah. He said, do you remember when I looked over and saw my son screaming at me? I said, yeah. He said, I learned a, night. I learned a lesson that night. I said, what would you learn, my friend? 
He said, I learned I wasn't screaming on the soccer field. I was doing that at home. And I went home and told my wife, I learned a lesson. She had heard the words before, trust me on this one. But she had not seen the eyes look like that in a long time. Six months later, she takes him to Three Forks, nice steak place here in Dallas. Beautiful dessert. When the dessert came out, she gave him the divorce papers. I call that triple suck. As he picked himself off the floor, she says, you might want to look at the date I signed him. It was the same day I put him on the soccer field. In the morning, she was signing the divorce papers. In the evening, I put him on the field. He came home before the papers showed up and said, I learned a lesson, and I'm going to change. She had faith. That's all we have, folks. Don't lose faith. Say true. And she gave him time. That's all you need is time. Say true. She says, you changed so much. I'm giving you back to the divorce papers, and I'm choosing to live with you for the rest of my life. He said, I saved his marriage. I did not save his marriage. He did. Don't take credit for things you don't do. That'll be your downfall. Say true. Who in this room's ever told somebody something you wish you'd have never told them? Raise your hands. I wish I'd have never told them to take that four-wheeler back. I really would love to have that sucker. And you know what, you know what, you know what, say what? Yes. Law number two, it never gets better than the interview. So stop looking, she goes, true. Stop looking for something that doesn't exist. Folks, some of you are going to understand. Most of you are not yet. But begin the process. Everybody in this room has keys. I don't know how many keys you have. I just know that in this room, you have a lot of them. And you know what those keys are for? They're for you to use to open a door for another human being and you get nothing for it. They don't work for you. They don't buy from you. They don't suck up to you. They don't mow your lawn. How well you use those keys will truly determine the greatness that's going to come to you in your lifetime. Say true. Because most of the time when we're talking to somebody, let's be honest, we have a need and we need it filled. You want to change your life big time? Please say yes. yes. So from this day forward, when you're talking to a person, have one goal in mind. Put that person in a place where they're going to succeed. Because if it is in this business, everybody wins. If it's not in this business, everybody wins. It's when you cross that, everybody loses. Say true. True. All I know is one thing, technology was given to us to, with a promise, wasn't it? To make our lives easier, to give us more free time, to make things run smoother. Did it? No. no. It's not supposed to. You're supposed to. I'm in Chicago O'Hare at 1.30 in the morning. The plane cancels. No surprise. Ah, bad seed, bad seed, bad seed. Must come up on the screen. Weird guy's got to get there. So she says, hey, don't worry about it, Dodge. We'll get you to Florida. Because me not showing's not an option, folks. Are you with me? Say yes. yes. She said it's going to be an all night, but don't worry about it. At 2.30 in the morning, I'm in the hotel, right there at, at the airport. Ten people are still standing around. They're all talking on the cell phone. Can I ask you a question? Who are you talking to at 2.30 in the morning? So I kind of lost it because I have to have somebody to talk to. Are you with me? Say yes. I said, would somebody please put down their phone so I can talk to somebody? You want to know the truth? Say yes. yes. All ten of them walked away. <laughs> One lady walked up and she says, you might want to try a different approach. <laughs> Folks, we were probably supposed to talk. People are not putting things down so we can have a conversation because our past was supposed to cross. Say true. I had a lady come to interview my company. She goes, I want to work for your company. I said, why do you want to work for my company? She goes, I have no idea. I said, did you learn that in interviewing class? Like reverse psychology thing coming out now or what? I said, if you could do anything you wanted to do and all you had to do was pick it, what would you do? She said, I'd be a missionary in South Africa. She's been down there almost 13 years now. Do you know why she interviewed my company? Everybody say, why? because I knew the phone number she needed to dial. Sometimes it comes to being that simple, doesn't it? 
It's time that we set aside our agenda. It's time that we put in front their agenda. Law number three. Are you ready? Write this down word for word. If you can't change the people, you got that part, say yes. You got that part, say yes. Then you must change the people. Do you know why? Everybody say why. Oh, you're the best I've ever heard. All right, folks, here's what we're going to do. And by the way, there's no greater compliment than the whole wide world for those of you that went and invested in this packet. Thank you very much. But I am going to tell you something right now. I'll make you a promise, and here's my promise. Anybody that knows the answer to this one question, this is yours. And no, you can't raise your hand. You've got to have the answer. All right, you ready? Say yes. Yes. What does failure hate worse than failure? And only two people in my lifetime has known the answer, and both of them were 16 years of age. What is it? Success. Nope, that's not it. What is it? What? Get up here. Get up here. Misery loves... It's where it came from, folks. Now I'm going to share something with you. Are you really ready? Say yes. yes. People choose to fail. Say true. true. Failure just doesn't happen. You choose it. And once you choose to fail, give him a big round of applause. Punch it, big guy. You the man. Once a person chooses to fail, their only focus is getting somebody to go with them. And if you let a bad seed hang around too long... It will turn a good seed into a bad seed. Say true. It's our calling to stand up and protect this business, protect this industry, and protect the people that we love most. Say true. true. Congratulations, my friend. It's all yours. Thank you. Congratulations. You're awesome. People ask me all the time, what is it that inspires me? What is it that gives me the energy? Where do I find that sparkle? that uh, allows me to do what I love to do when sometimes I'm really tired. What rewards me most is seeing people's eyes open up, seeing their eyes clear up, and seeing them realize where they are is not so bad. And I love when people come up to me after the program and say, you know what, I was considering leaving the situation, and I realize leaving is not the right answer. Making where I am better is the best answer. And also the most important thing, is accepting the fact that their energy is their choice. Bring energy home. The family will give it to you. And the other most important thing is, is that if you look for the good and where you are, you'll find it. And the greatest gift is sometimes have people have a tendency to stop looking. And people come back up and say, thank you for reminding me that my life is my choice and I choose to have a better life. And that to me is what inspires me. First of all, I want to thank you for taking the time to review the video and look at the different clips. There's three things I want to mention to you right now. Number one is my commitment. My commitment to doing the research on the company, the research on the people, the research on the product. I will want to know what their challenges are. What are some of the issues going on? Who are the people that are doing really, really well? So when I present the material, it's done in a custom format for the people in the room. So they'll know I've done my homework because they know who I'm talking to. And I think professionals appreciate that more than anything else. And the second promise I make you is to be professional. Timely-wise, dress-wise, and the words that I use will be those who make you very proud to have me part of your event and your company. And the third is my energy. The love for what I do and the appreciation to have the opportunity to let your people know they matter a lot, they can make a huge difference in this world, and that life's good. And do it in an inspirational way so they understand it comes from within, not from the outside and that they can make a big difference because my goal is very sincere. That is, I want to remind them of something they already know is true. So when they show up tomorrow to work, they have a clearer focus on helping their environment continue to grow because that's what they've been called to do. I, v I wish you the very best in making this decision, but I promise you, if you choose 
me to be a part of the event, you will not regret that. Thank you very much for your time.